Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. The video you're about to see is something I'm doing a little bit differently this time. This is the first time that I'm working with this recipe, Shepherd's Pie. Oh, and by the way, if I look like John McCain today, I have a little bit of swelling on this side. I went through oral surgery yesterday. I need an implant here and there isn't enough bone. So they had to take a piece of bone out of the back of my jaw and put it in the front as a, a bone graft. And this was just yesterday. I went through two oral surgeries, literally, and I feel fine today other than a little bit of swelling. I'm great. It's amazing what medicine and dentistry can do today. Anyways, um, this is the first time I've worked with this recipe. I, I videoed this actually last week. And what I thought would be helpful is for you to see the problems that I encountered during the course of making this dish for the first time. The thing is, when we write a recipe, any of us who cooks, we do things our own way. And so we write the recipe for what makes sense to us, but maybe the way you cook is a little bit differently. And so when you work through the recipe, you'd think, I wouldn't do it that way. And that's fine. Even my own recipes, if you download them from the website, I expect you to adjust them for the way you do things. Why not? So watch the video. You'll see the problems that I encountered and you'll see how I solved them, which is, I think, the way anybody should cook. It is cold outside. It is raining. This is the kind of day that I like to use the oven and bake something that I would consider to be comfort food. I'm going to be making shepherd's pie today and I actually got this idea from one of the fans of the website, someone named Michael, who wrote to me from England. There's some dispute over whether to call shepherd's pie or cottage pie things that are made with ground beef. Supposedly cottage pie is made with ground beef and shepherd's pie is made with lamb. There's a whole discussion of that on Wikipedia. You can decide for yourself. I like the differentiation. I'm content with calling cottage pie something made with ground beef and shepherd's pie made with ground lamb. I'm going to be making shepherd's pie today because I really like lamb. So having said that, I want to tell you the ingredients that I'm going to be using for making my shepherd's pie today. I'm calling this Welsh shepherd's pie because supposedly this recipe originated in Wales. I have one pound of lean lamb that I've minced. I actually buy my lamb, the leg of lamb, at the warehouse store and then I trim off most of the fat and then put it into smaller pieces. This I chopped up in a food processor. And I'm using half of a large onion that I've just kind of coarsely chopped one medium carrot coarsely chopped, one stick of celery coarsely chopped. I'm going to remove this vegetable stuff from the broth after I bake it because this is going to bake initially for two hours. These are going to be baked down quite a bit. I'm going to be putting fresh vegetables in when I go to actually bake the pie. Then I have two cups of beef stock. I don't know that I'm going to be using all of that. I don't need the whole thing probably, but I've got it. Salt and pepper to taste. I'm not going to use any salt because my stock is not low sodium. And you can buy stock in the store, by the way, if you don't want to make your own beef stock. I, I bought this. And then the original recipe called for cornstarch. I'm not too keen on using cornstarch as a thickening agent. What I have here is some flour that I've cooked in a skillet until it's well cooked and starts to color. I would call this a medium kind of um, flour. Let me take a light one out and show you. This is a, I don't know how well you can see it. This is a, a lighter color. This is a darker color. I just cooked this for a few minutes on the stove just to cook the flour and then I let it cool, cooked it in a skillet and then put it in a jar. This I cooked a little bit longer to give it a darker color. I would use this with beef or lamb. This I would use for thickening something like a chicken gravy or a chicken stock. Okay, so this I'm going to be using about three to four teaspoons of this to thicken my stock. And if I have to thicken it more, I can always use more. And then I have a good two pounds of potatoes that I'm going to be using uh, mashed. I'm going to mash these with some, again, salt and pepper, some butter and some milk. 
So those are the ingredients I'm using, fairly simple, to be making my shepherd's pie. My first step here is to slow cook my lamb at 275 degrees for about two hours. So what I did, by the way, is I put about a tablespoon of that cooked flour in a bowl and added, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of stock and stirred that just so that it wouldn't be lumpy. And then I'm going to add that to all of this stuff. So my lamb goes in, my celery, carrots, onions. As I mentioned, I'm not going to add any salt, but there's my pepper. Going to add a little bit more stock now to this. And get this nicely stirred up. I wanted to pre-mix my flour there so I don't again I don't get any lumps. That's in there. Just gonna break this stuff up. The meat mostly. And then I want to pour in enough stock just to cover these vegetables and the meat. That should be all right. Give this a stir. Make sure there are no solids on the bottom. And that's just about right. Okay, I'm going to heat my oven to 275 degrees. I am going to put a lid on this because I'm not sure whether that should be baked covered or not. I'm going to assume it needs to be covered and this will be baked at 275 degrees for two hours and that should slow cook that lamb and give us the next step what's going to go into the shepherd's pie. I did want to mention that there's a reason why I don't want to use the cornstarch. Cornstarch is a good thickening agent, but when it thickens an ingredient, a liquid, cornstarch turns transparent. I don't particularly like the idea of transparency in gravy. By using flour, it gives more of an opaque thickening, and I want that opaque look rather than the, the translucent look that I would get from the cornstarch. My meat and vegetables have gone into the oven. In the meantime, I peeled and chopped my potatoes. These I'm going to boil. I've got water heating on the stove. I'm going to boil these until they're tender, 20, 25, 30 minutes, whatever it takes until they're tender. And then I'm going to very carefully mash them. The directions say not to turn the mashed potatoes into a paste. If you overwork potatoes, you can make a gummy mashed potatoes. Maybe they're assuming that, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my potatoes when I get to that stage. I think the best way to mash potatoes is with a potato ricer. This is a little device. You put the potatoes inside, if you're not familiar with it, and you push it down. And what it does is it forces the potatoes out through this perforated disc here that fits in the bottom. There's different sizes. This one comes with three different sizes. So, if I can do this. My potatoes, by the way, cooked in about 15 minutes. It all depends on how large you chop them. All right, and you just squeeze it through the bottom like so. And I like using the potato ricer because it's like you're doing the least amount of damage to the mashed potatoes. That works so beautifully. I'm just finishing up here. I'm just going to load this with all this leftovers that squirted out through the top. All 
I don't want to waste any. Okay, so there it is, the last of my potatoes. And then, clean up my mess here. I'm going to put in some butter, pretty good size wad of butter. That's several tablespoons. Always some black pepper. I love pepper and potatoes. Then a little bit of milk. In this case, it's some half and half. And then just gently mix that up. Don't overwork it. Alright, I'm just going to taste that for salt. I know it's going to need some salt. So maybe the most half a teaspoon of salt there. Okay, taste that one more time. That should be fine. It is, it's ideal. So there are my potatoes for topping my shepherd's pie. All right, here is my pot of lamb. Ah, looks good. Now, as I said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straining this and I'm gonna be picking out the vegetables because I don't know whether you can see it but some of this stuff is like this celery here is just so cooked out that I think it's going to look awful in a finished dish so I want to pick out the vegetables strain out this um, this broth which didn't thick up thicken up at all I can thicken that up and turn that into a gravy because I have more of that flour. And then I'm going to chop some fresh vegetables and make my pie with fresh vegetables. I think it'll taste so much better. Now here is my liquid from the meat. You can see this didn't thicken at all. Those of you who are thinking people, you're probably already starting to put together an answer. I am. Here's the original recipe. It says, as far as liquid, enough beef stock to cover. Well, how much is that? So therefore, if you don't know what the liquid is, how do you know what to use for flour, or in this case, cornstarch? You need to know your ratio of wet to dry ingredients so you can figure out how you're gonna thicken, what you're, how much you're gonna need as far as the cornstarch or the flour to thicken your gravy. The other issue is, since you're gonna be straining the meat out anyways, and I have my meat sitting over there. Why put the flour in there in the first place? Why not do what you do when you're making gravy on the stove? Put your flour, put your liquid in a pan. I'm going to put some of it in a pan and a little bit in a bowl here. And then use this. Let me bring this up to heat. To thicken it and thicken it on the stove. Makes perfect sense. So already I've solved one of the problems with this recipe. 
And I'm, I'm gonna leave this as is, rather than re-video this clip. I might need that again. Because it shows, I think this is a good example about thinking on your feet to solve problems with a recipe. Again, you're gonna strain the liquid out, so why put thickener in it in advance? Second, if the recipe doesn't even tell you how much liquid, how do you know how much flour to use? I'm gonna work back and forth if I have to. I'll mix more flour with my broth in a small bowl. I'm mixing it in a small bowl and getting it mixed up first before I put it into the pan so that it doesn't, if I put flour right into the pan, especially when this gets hot, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get lumps, right? This is just now starting to heat up. I'm waiting for this to come up to a boil. It's not going to thicken until it comes up to a boil. And by working back and forth, I can thin it if I need to, or I can add more flour and thicken it. I can work back and forth until I have this worked out as to how much I need. This stainless steel pan is my pan for making gravy. My other pans, I have to worry about the coating. This is coming up to a boil. I'm going to reduce my heat to medium. This one, I don't have to worry about the coating in the pan, and I can use my stainless steel whisk without having to worry about scratching. Okay, that's not thickening very well yet, so I'm gonna put a little bit of a little more broth in my bowl. Get the flour all mixed in and then once again, whisk this in. And I'm using my dark flour again. Now that's starting to look like a gravy. No lumps. Again, that's come up to a boil. It's just starting to boil. I reduce the heat to low because I'm going to go a little bit more here. I can do it this way too, that works. Bring my heat back up. Whisk this in, and that will probably be too thick. Yep, that's thickening. So now I'm just going to run the last of my broth in here, and that should do it. Let that come up to a boil, and that will finish our gravy. Wonderful. I'm just seeing that starting to thicken. And let me see if I can do a close-up and show you what it looks like. This does have some graininess to it that's from the meat. When I strained it, I didn't strain it through a fine sieve, I strained it through a colander. So the finest pieces of meat are gonna be sitting in this, but that's okay because that's all gonna go right back into the pie anyways. All right, let me see if I can do a close up and show you what this looks like. So there it is, you can see that it's, it has a flow to it, which is all I wanted to have as far as a gravy, but you can see how it coats the spoon a little bit. But that to me is just perfect. That's a perfect gravy. Okay, let's start assembling my shepherd's pie. I'm ready to start assembling my shepherd's pie. I'm thinking this glass dish might be just the size I need. So there's my meat. 
little piece of carrot that I missed there. The directions say to put in just enough gravy to moisten this. That sounds okay by me. Let me put half of this in first and then if I need to add more I can. All right, I'm going to work in my vegetables. Again, I chopped some carrots fresh. And I did this into a smaller dice than I did. I'm not going to use all these onions than I did initially. And this really, this part that I have here, this amount of onions, this isn't even a quarter of the onion. A little bit more. I'm going to break this up. Get rid of these larger pieces. A little more gravy. I don't want this swimming with in gravy, but I do want it moist. I'm going to end up using most of this gravy, I can tell. more over here in this corner. Okay. I'm happy with that. I'm smoothing this out. I'm going to want to add my, pot my potatoes. press this carefully on there because I want it to cover the top. I don't want to push it down where it'll push that meat out. These potatoes are a bit cold because they've been in the refrigerator. If I had warmed them up they might be softer and easier to work with but this will be okay. Okay, I want to Flatten this down. Take time smooth smoothing this surface because we're going to decorate this top surface. I'm going to use my fingers at this point. I think it'll be easier. I use my hands a lot more in cooking than most people might like, but I just think it's the human hands, our sense of touch is so useful. Yeah, I'm using up all this potatoes. Okay, flattening that down nicely. And my last step is to decorate that top with a fork. Smooth around the edge here. Get rid of most of this extra. And then as far as decorating this, I'm going to use like a, a large salad fork. And I'm just going to kind of cross hatch this. Train going by. Proof that I live in a trailer park. All right. Final step. Read my directions here. Heat the oven to 400 degrees and bake until potato is crispy and golden on the peaks about 30 minutes and until it's hot all the way through. So 400 degrees in the oven for at least 30 minutes. Okay, here it is, fresh out of the oven. I ran this in there about another 
15 minutes, so a total of 45 to get this little bit of browning on top. I suppose I could have put this under the broiler to get it a little more brown. I'm going to let this sit now for about 15-20 minutes just to let that kind of set up a little bit. And then spoon it out and see what it tastes like. Well, it smells good. Let's see what I got here. The first piece is always the worst piece because it's not going to come out real pretty. Really the best way is just to spoon this out. Ah, oh, that looks good and it smells good now that I've broken through to the meat underneath. So there's my meat and vegetables, potatoes on top. Let's see how good this tastes. Here it is, shepherd's pie. Now, a few words about this. This isn't a fancy food. It's more like a comfort food. According to one of my encyclopedias, this dish originated out of a way of economically using up leftovers from the ubiquitous Sunday roast. So this isn't high tea food. This is just good old comfort food. Let me see how this tastes. Mmm, very good. Mmm. That's very, very good. The mashed potatoes are going to taste like mashed potatoes. That's what they are. But as far as the lamb, which I love lamb anyways, and the vegetables together, very nice. Very, very good. I gotta go eat my Welsh shepherd's pie. I did eat that shepherd's pie that I made and when I was eating it, what I noticed about it was there was an awful lot of potatoes in it, which made sense because the original recipe called for two pounds of potatoes and one pound of lamb. What does that tell you? Again, shepherd's pie came out of a need of using leftovers economically after the Sunday roast if you're going to be economical, why not use a lot of potatoes? But if I were to make this again, and in fact, when I make it again to do the photography and to write the recipe for the PDF that will go on the website, I'm going to double the amount of lamp to two pounds. I'm going to cut the potatoes back to about a pound and a half. And then you saw in the video that I put in some fresh vegetables at the end, I had put in one stalk of celery and one carrot nicely chopped and then less than half of an onion. I'm going to double the carrot and the celery. The onion I don't think matters as much, but two nicely chopped carrots, two stalks of celery chopped. I think it needed more of a vegetable presence to make it a, a better dish. So those are the changes that I would make. Hopefully this serves as a good example to you that when you get a recipe for the first time and you're not familiar with it, read through it and try to pick out those areas where you think you might need to make adjustments. Even if you download the recipes off of my website, you're going to find things that you're going to want to do differently. So why not? My, my recipes aren't cast in concrete. I expect any of you to change them and make, make adjustments as needed. So I hope that video was helpful for you. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.